Appendicitis is the topic for uh, this presentation. And as the name implies, itis is inflammation and inflammation of the appendix. So here we go. So appendicitis is acute inflammation of the appendix and uh, it causes abdominal pain, nausea and vomiting, and abdominal tenderness as well. Now, what's important to understand is, uh, first of all, what is the appendix? Um, what's happening? So I have a little diagram here. Uh, this is the appendix right here. Um, it's located in the close proximity to the cecum, and it's a vestigial structure, meaning it has no purpose in the body, but when it becomes inflamed, it needs to have surgical removal. So there it is. And what? Uh, why would it get inflamed? What's happening here? Well, the most common reason why the appendix, which normally just sits there in the body with no function, quietly, uh, most common reason it can become inflamed is obstruction. And um, they talk about reasons, and one of them is a lymphoid hyperplasia, uh, where uh, the cells are increasing, the lymphoid cells. But um, uh, another really common is uh, fecalith. Fecalith, uh, which can get trapped inside uh, that um, lumen of the appendix. And that, when that happens, that can lead to uh, inflammation. And then if the inflammation is untreated, it can eventually lead to necrosis and perforation. And that, uh, once it perforates, uh, that, that's when you're in big trouble. So you want to catch it before that happens. The presentation or symptomatology of appendicitis is very classic. It starts off as this epigastric or periumbilical pain, uh, or uh, right above the umbilical, umbilicus, periumbilical pain, which eventually, over a few hours, radiates to the right lower quadrant. Okay, very classic. And the pain uh, uh, on physical exam, uh, the tenderness is elicited at McBurney's point. McBurney's point. Now, where is McBurney's point? This is the umbilicus right here. Right here is the um, anterior superior iliac spine. That's where that uh, is pointing to. McBurney's point is right here, as you can see. It's one-third of the way from the ASIS, anterior superior iliac spine, to the umbilicus. So that's right there. So this is one-third of the way to here. And this is, of course, two-thirds. And the total is one. So that's, uh, that's the location of McBurney's point. Now, there's two other very important physical diagnosis uh, uh, techniques you can use. Uh, it's very important to do these actually because you can save yourself some time uh, and, and expense uh, if you do these uh, the psoas sign and obturator sign. Make sure you do these because uh, otherwise you're just wasting time and money ordering tests. You can diagnose appendicitis by sometimes just doing basic simple uh, physical diagnosis tests. Well, what is obturator and psoas? Well, here's a couple diagrams. This one, first one, is op the obturator sign right here. But what's going on here? Well, you are uh, initially flexing the thigh, and then you internally rotate. So the arrows here, if you can see, the arrows are telling you exactly what to do, and that can elicit pain. The next one here is psoas sign. What you do is you get the patient to lie sideways, and then you uh, passively extend that right hip, and that stretches that. Uh, muscle that uh, can uh, in the iliopsoas muscle and that can cause tenderness and pain so those two important physical diagnosis uh, techniques can save you a lot of time now how do you diagnose it well we just we just mentioned you know you do a, a good history about you know what's going on in terms of the the type of pain and the the progression of the pain but then you do those psoas and obturator signs and if you still can't get a, uh, a answer, you do an ultrasound of the abdomen. And uh, the next step is actually a CT of the abdomen. Uh, it, it varies uh, based on textbook, but generally speaking, this is cheaper. So generally speaking, on licensing exams, they like you to choose the cheaper one first. But 
I mean, I've seen in ERs where they go straight to the CT. So if it's if you have a choice between these two, you probably want to do the ultrasound. But if only one of these is present, then obviously that's the right answer. All right. So treatment, how do you treat it? Well, before you get into treatment, you have to remember that treatment is, is very important because if you don't, the prognosis is uh, uh, greater than 50% uh, mortality if it's untreated, for untreated. So you definitely want to treat it. Uh, and uh, you definitely want to make sure you get the right diagnosis as quickly as possible. Well, the treatment is you have to surgically remove the appendix, appendectomy, open or laparoscopic appendectomy. And you also pre-treat the patient with IV antibiotics. And the uh, antibiotics of choice is uh, cephalosporins. And that's done uh, to prevent any uh, infection. Uh, and in particular, if the patient had a temp or a high WBC count, that shows that there might be some bacterial overgrowth and infection. All right. Well, now that we've talked a little bit about appendicitis, let's jump into some clinical vignettes here. All right. So here's the first one. A 25-year-old professional basketball player presents to the team physician three hours before game time complaining of abdominal pain. The symptoms began approximately eight hours earlier in a diffuse fashion. Two hours later, he began feeling nauseated and vomited twice. Over the past four hours, the abdominal pain has become more severe and well localized in the right lower quadrant. His examination now reveals well localized pain in the right lower quadrant, inferolateral to the umbilicus. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? Well, in ferrolateral to umbilicus, they're talking about McBurney's point. Right? Here's the umbilicus, inferior and lateral. All right? So that, I just wanted to mention that. They don't mention, say, uh, McBurney's point. They just kind of talk about it in a way that you have to figure it out. Well, this is obviously appendicitis, but which one of these? Well, I remember one of the causes of appendicitis is fecalith. Remember the fecalith that gets trapped inside that lumen uh, right here? This is the appendix and the fecal lith gets trapped inside and then causes the inflammation and um, uh, bacterial overgrowth and eventually ischemia. So right there, acute obstruction of the appendiceal lumen by fecal lith. So the answer is A. All right, let's get into the last one. A 15-year-old secondary school student is brought to the emergency department because of severe right lower quadrant abdominal pain. She was at volleyball practice when she suddenly doubled over in pain. She has no significant past medical history and had a few episodes of right-sided abdominal pain in the last week. She says that the earlier episodes of pain were much less severe. She's sexually active with one partner, her boyfriend, and they use condoms at, for birth control. Her temperature is 101 or 38 Celsius, pulse is 90, blood pressure is 120 over 85, respirations are 14. On physical exam, she appears very uncomfortable and is in obvious pain. Abdominal exam is significant for focal exquisite tenderness and guarding in the right lower quadrant. Leukocyte count is 11,200 with 69% segmented neutrophils and 2% band forms. The most appropriate tests or study at this time. Well, interestingly, they're showing an elevated WBC count. They're showing a temp. Uh, and they're showing right right lower quadrant tenderness. Um, so that's pretty classic for a uh, uh, appendicitis case that might have even uh, perforated, perhaps. Well, which one of these would you say? A lower uh, GI barium enema is the most appropriate test? Eh, probably not. Ultrasound of the appendix? That sounds good. Uh, ultrasound of the pelvis? Mm, not as specific. Upper GI, well, they're talking about GI, and this probably isn't a GI issue. EUA, probably not the best test. Ultrasound, and remember, like I mentioned earlier, if they had mentioned CT, that would be the right answer. If they mentioned both ultrasound and CT, go with the cheaper one, which is ultrasound.